What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're going to do an update on our FMS FCX24 Power Wagon build. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to revisit the FCX24 Power Wagon build. It's been a while since I've featured this thing, and it deserves some attention because it's awesome right now. Now if you follow me on my other socials, and you've been watching the videos on this channel recently, you know that I've been really enamored with the TRX4M, and I've really been wrapped up in my SCX24 comp build. But there's another build that I've been working on that's lurking in the shadows, that's been sitting there quietly waiting for its time to shine, and that is the good old FCX24 Power Wagon. Now, I've snuck in posts about it here and there in videos, but I haven't given it the attention it deserves because the thing is awesome right now. It's got probably the best stance of any crawler that I have and immense performance to back that up as well. So I figured we'd do a quick refresh of this. Let's look at what I've done to it a little more in depth. And then we're also going to install the Fury Tech brushless system in this rig. That's going to be the meat of the video is doing the brushless conversion. But I really want to just check this thing out and show you guys what I've been doing to it and check out some of the mods that I've done in the last couple weeks or even further back actually. So let's dive in and take a closer look at this thing. Just a quick recap at this thing. So right off the bat when you got to look at the stance of this rig it is long and slammed i think it looks fantastic i love how it looks what gives it this appearance primarily is this extended trailing arm kit from rc all-wheel drive and this is a all aluminum plus 35 millimeter extension kit it comes with the drive shaft and the four links in the back i'm running this with the triangular portion pointing down just lets it sit a little lower i feel if i wanted to flip that around and use it as a high clearance setup i could do that but it would lift it up a little bit more just because of how the shocks would sit but i really like how it sits right now i think it looks so aggressive so mean looking it's crazy from the front you can really see how wide this thing is and that's due to the Treel hex extensions that I put on here. So this thing has a ton of brass in the front. It has the big Treel portal covers on it, plus the Treel hex extensions and the brass RC all-wheel drive wheels. All of that combined, man, you see these tires just sagging under its own weight. This thing is extremely heavy up front. Speaking of tires, these are the new Endura 64 millimeter rock terrains. I'm running them with a medium compound crawler innovation little Nova foam and it is too soft I gotta say the I mean it's just so squishy it's unbelievable you wait to see this thing run these, these things conform and wrap around like nobody's business it's nuts but on a side hill they definitely roll and fold all over themselves so as much as I like the tire squish and it looks so rad I'm going to have to change that out. Probably some slime balls, some flubber stuffers is what these tires really need in this build. Up front, you know, I've also got the upgraded steering linkage to tighten this thing up. I did retrofit an Emax servo in here because the stock ones kept dying on me. And the, actually, the servo horn kept stripping out before the servo would die. So I got tired of that and I retrofit in an Emax. So that's what I'm running right now. Steering linkage. It's all upgraded. It says RC all-wheel drive. I do also have the RC all-wheel drive axle housings front and back. These are all aluminum units. I got these early on. I don't know if they are still available for sale. When I looked at the website, I didn't see them recently. If they're not, it's a bummer because they look awesome. They're that red anodized aluminum casings. I think they look great. In the back, I'm also running the RC all-wheel drive brass portal covers, inner and outer portal covers. The drive shaft that comes with the extended trailing arm kit comes with a chrome drive shaft. I'm not a fan of chrome, so what I did was I put a Gladiator drive shaft on here. So that's what I'm running for my rear drive shaft. I've cut the fenders. You know, I think you've seen that before in other build videos, but it just get I mean, the just the appearance and the stance of this thing. I feel like it is outrageous, and it just looks so good. The side profile is killer. I love it. And man, this thing 
up hills this thing is such an animal it's crazy how well it can climb and it does also articulate really well thanks to this the aluminum linkage pivots really well and i'm running the rc all-wheel drive long travel shocks which aren't super long they're just about the same as the stock length but they work really well the action's really nice i'm running them without springs just again so i can keep that sag and keep that low center of gravity but it flexes really well really happy with it it's this is a three inch ramp and it's got room to go above that but it's able to flex on that really well which is if you remember when i had the extended trailing arms on there before one of my biggest gripes was that it really limited articulation but these rc all-wheel drive units have got the pivot hardware in the links so they act really really well from an articulation standpoint the links are able to move and pivot really well just a great fitting product i'm really happy with it so all in all i'm loving how this thing looks and performs right now i haven't been using it much lately only because my son fried the esc in his power wagon and i ripped the esc out of this to donate to his to get it up and running so that brings us to the topic of this video which is the fury tech brushless conversion so we are going to do the micro komodo conversion this is the full kit this has the transmission ready to go as the motor bolted on there transmission everything it's just a drop and go you know i i love to do that with my builds this is no exception this is gonna be a good one one thing that i did do with this is that i've already been in it and i put all metal transmission gears in it so with the brushless powertrain i'm going to start fortifying my whole drivetrain i want to make sure that everything's solid everything's metal and good to go so all metal transmission gears I, I have metal differentials for front and back for this thing. I have not put them in yet. That's going to be a project for the very near future because I don't want to strip those out either. So when we get the transmission in there, the only plastic gears in here will be in the diffs. So it's got the metal portal gears as well. So I'm just kind of chasing around any loose ends. I want to make sure that everything's tight, everything's strong, especially when we've got this brushless conversion in here. Since I donated the ESC from this thing to my son's power wagon, we needed a new ESC, which we would also need for the brushless conversion. So I got the Tegu 24 Pro from Fury Tech. So this is a all-in-one. It's got the receiver and the ESC with the Bluetooth combo so that I can run my avatar transmitter with this setup. So this is a really clean piece of hardware. It's what I run on the Gladiator. Really, really sharp looking. So this is gonna just gonna drop right on that tray there, look really nice, and we'll be able to hook it right up to the avatar and run this thing with one remote with the rest of the crew. So it should be good. So I'm gonna get to installing this thing, and then we'll take it out on the course and see how it goes. Here's our setup. So it gets super, super easy install. Just really plug and play. The combination of the transmission and the motor make it so easy. And that Fury Tech ESC combo up front, unbelievable. So good looking. I love it. That clear glass case, the way it sits on there, everything is just amazing. So a couple things to note. I did not even think about the variable speed servo that runs the transmission has this quirky little plug on it. I'm gonna to have to fashion some sort of adapter and I don't know how I'm gonna be able to run that with the Tegu Pro and the Avatar. So I'm gonna to have to do some research on how to make the two-speed transmission functional with this setup. I had to put a new servo in because again, I had made the adapter for the prior Emacs. Wasn't gonna work in this one. So it has a brand new Emacs digital servo in here now. Hooked up to the Bluetooth app, I got the, it's all situated, I had to you know, reverse the throttle direction. I didn't tune my throttle curve or anything, 
but I did go in and update the firmware, make sure that was all set and good to go. So it looks great, I love it. That micro Komodo in there looks so good. Running the 3S battery on it, mainly out of necessity because if I put the 2S in there, I can't close my body. So I like these little 3S batteries are short and stubby and I think it'll fit in there with no issues. So again, I'm gonna have to look at how to put my 2S batteries in there or just run exclusively 3S, I guess, we'll see. But this is how it is right now. So I'm really happy with it. Like I said, super easy install. Such a nice and easy project. I love it when they go together that simply. So I'm gonna button this thing up and then we'll put it on the course and see how this thing runs. Like I said, it is all. Look, yeah. Love it. Good. I can't wait to try this thing. This is going to be unstoppable with the brushless system, I think. Awesome. Let's go try it out. All right, here we are. So I was actually able to get the 2S battery in there. You can see the eco power through the windshield there. It's an ugly fit, but I got it in. So I'm going to have to figure something out with the batteries. But in the meantime, we can at least try it out see how this thing does. Slow speed is excellent. This is that tire fold, man, this thing is crazy. It ditched that super whiny sound that I had prior, so it, it sounds a lot better. It still has quite a whine to it. Probably the transmission, all that stuff working in there. But it's much quieter than it was before. Slow crawl at work. Oh my gosh, this thing is an animal. <laughs> Look at the stance on it. Isn't that crazy? It's so slammed. I love it. it does hurt it on the breakovers though. Like you'll see if I can clear this coming up over here. Yeah, see, it just gets high centered really easy. Where this thing really shines is on the vertical climbs. Like, this thing is nuts. We'll try Hell's Gate. Now, I could do this full throttle before I did the brushless conversion. And this thing is quite a bit more juice now, but let's see. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how this thing climbs. Over on the other side on the escalator now. Monster. I'm having so much fun, like, mesmerized by this thing.
this like near vertical line. Holy moly, it's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. Come on. Oh, so close. did it holy cow that was crazy line <laughs> so i'm gonna wrap it up there what'd you think of the power wagon it's come a long way right i really love this build and i've been having so much fun with it i could play on that course all night long with that brushless system the slow crawl and the torque and just the the power band of the micro komodo really takes this thing to a whole nother level it is just so capable with the chassis setup with that long wheelbase and that low and wide track, man, this thing is just an animal. So much fun, just having a blast. So I do have a couple things to sort out. You know, I do have to figure out how to get that variable speed servo to work with the avatar so I can utilize my two-speed transmission. I really wanna see what this thing is capable of from a speed perspective with the brushless motor and on 3S. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I just gotta figure out how to work it. Still gotta dig in there and replace the diffs with the metal gears. Now that we've got all that extra torque and power, I wanna make sure that my powertrain is fortified so that we don't strip anything out. And you know, we did the transmission, but now I wanna do the rest of the drivetrain. I really love the brushless system in that Tegu 24 Pro because now I'm able to run the regular batteries, my regular 2S and 3S batteries with the JST connector. Really helps out. And I'm also able to run upgraded servos now too you know, with the regular connectors. I can run the Emacs, the EcoPower, you know, whatever else I want to put in there. I can go big if I want to with a Reefs or NSDRC or something like that. So this setup really kind of allows me to do a bunch of tertiary upgrades that I couldn't before because the connections aren't the same in the stock FCX24 setup. But all in all, super happy with this thing. Really glad I did the brushless conversion. It's just so easy with those kits from Fury Tech, man. Just drop them in and then the avatar setup makes it really easy too. It was a bit of a pricey conversion though. I mean, the motor and the transmission combo is only $70, but the Tegu 24 Pro is around 110, I believe it was for the setup that I got. Plus I've got the avatar that I run it on. So if you were to do that from scratch, you know, it's, it's a fairly pricey conversion, but I think it's worth it. It's a mighty impressive combo and I'm really happy with it. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of the build? This has been a fun project. Like I said, I've been kind of working on it in the background in the periphery, but I'm glad I got to showcase it here and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so and I'll see you in the next video.